Welcome to Tiger Tracks, your home for the best of LSU athletics. And now, your hosts, Jordy Holkberg and Bill Frankens. That is us, and you found us, and we're so glad you did. Welcome to Tiger Tracks on CST. Bill Frankens, I'm Jordy Holkberg. Since last we met, an unceremoniously finished to the LSU basketball season. Um, it's over and done with. Looking forward to next year. Baseball, getting ready to start. SEC play. Yeah, baseball plays host to Alabama this weekend at Alec Box Stadium Friday night at 7 o'clock. Uh, should be a, a great start to, mm -hmm. to SEC play, that 30-game grind yeah, yeah. that Coach Maneri likes to talk about. I mean, there are only four teams in the SEC in the top ten right now. <laughs> so it's going to be uh, quite, a, quite a league race, and uh, the Tigers will welcome the Crimson Tide this weekend. Uh, as you said, basketball wrapped up. Coach Jones uh, delivered his season-ending press conference earlier this week. So Tigers looking forward to uh, – making progress and hopefully, hopefully having better results next year. Spring football underway, LSU softball with a huge win over Louisiana Tech. But coming up on the program today, Karen Bonsall will join us. Uh, their annual big university uh, country club uh, annual tournament coming up. Right, right. LSU Tiger Golf Classic yeah. comes up. It starts on Sunday this year. It's a Sunday, mm. Monday, Tuesday event. Okay. So we want to encourage folks to come out, come out during your lunch hour and watch uh, some of the best female golfers in the country. Some of the top teams in the nation will be here uh, as uh, LSU is also hosting an NCAA regional. Right. So a lot of teams will be here for this event to prepare for the regional. SEC Gymnastics is about to come up. We'll have a preview on that. Much, much more. Glad you got found us. This is Tiger Tracks. We'll be back here on CST. Tracks, we begin the show talking LSU women's golf. And of course, our good friend Karen Bonson now in her 32nd season at LSU was a player, the first coach, ever, and she's been the only coach. Welcome. How are you? I'm not really the only coach, but thank you. Well, <laughs> but, but you haven't changed a lick. Oh, How's everything going? It's going good. All right. Talk about your team now. Let's, yeah. well, what's going on with it? Well, we're getting ready for our home tournament. Right. We're really excited about that. And, um, you know, this year's been a little bit of a struggle in that we lost Caroline Neistrup early in the year. And um, she hurt her wrist, hit a root during yeah, the she, tournament. For the audience, she's, yeah. she's ranked pretty high, right? She's number, she, at the time of the injury, she was ranked number nine in the world. In, in the world. In women's amateur golf. Wow. So that was a big hit, you know. But uh, the It's hard to replace a number nine ranked player in the world. I mean, you may, you may have some depth on your team, but number nine is number nine. That's, that's hard to put up with. Number nine is number nine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's hard. But, you know, the rest of the girls are just, you know, working their tails off. And sometimes, I think, put a little bit too much pressure on themselves. You know, trying to fill those shoes instead of just playing their normal game. You know, but I think they're starting to make the turn. I mean, it's not too late by any means, you know. And um, I feel really positive with where they are mentally at this point. And this is when the big part of the season's coming up. It's such a game of such finite measures. Yes. What separates a number nine ranked player from a 200? What, what is the difference? Um, Putting, score, I mean. A little bit of all that, you okay. know, but also the mental aspect, just the confidence and also um, just, you know, just little, little things, you know, really makes a difference, you know, just hitting a little bit better, hitting a little bit closer, making a few more putts, okay. those kinds of, okay. some intangibles as well. Gotcha. Well, Karen, the season has had a, a number of highlights as Absolutely. well. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, at the end of February, the, the Sugar Bowl tournament yeah. in New Orleans, mm -hmm. one of your young players, Sydney Cabin, wins the tournament, comes back yeah. uh, in the final round, and just a tremendous effort. I tell you what, that was unbelievably great because um, it was one of the strongest fields in collegiate golf, so she was playing against some of the best players out there. And for her to come out of, out there, her best finish before that tournament was 47th in the tournament. Wow. So um, it's not like she just, it wasn't like lightning in the bottle. She's just been really working hard and just finally it broke through and had success. And she was so strong mentally, and that's really what separated her. She played the smartest golf I've ever seen her play. And what people don't realize is that we had a, that's right when all those tornadoes were hitting. Right. So they called us off the golf course and we were playing when all that was going on um, because we were in a safe area, apparently. They weren't too close. But, um, they called us off the golf course, and, and she had to come in with one hole to play. And she uh, came back out there kind of knowing where she was and uh, hit this unbelievable shot from 195 out over a tree, dead middle of the green, two putts for par, and that's what won the tournament for her. 
What does that do for her now going Confidence. forward? Confidence. Yeah, you know, I would to think. know that she can do it and that she can play with the, the best players out there. So that's great and that's, you know, good for our program. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Another young player on your team is freshman Kathleen Gallagher. Yeah. Now, now she's, a, she's a legacy. She is. Because her mom played for you also. <laughs> <laughs> her mom is Sissy Meeks Gallagher. Yes. Her dad is Jim Gallagher, who's, who's a, a, a pro professional as well. Tell us yes. about Kathleen and her background. Kathleen has just been tremendous coming right in. And I knew she was one of those young ladies that was going to do well in collegiately because uh, Jim and Sissy raised her in a way that they knew they didn't want her to burn out really early. Mm -hmm. So they were smart and they prepared her and they played tournaments, but they also um, in the wintertime played other sports and did other things because a lot of these kids are just gosh they get so burnt out you know sometimes by their six by the time they're 16 years old so they just she's been around the great players her entire life so she understands the game really well and also she um, really just is settled and understands her own game you know and that's fantastic and she's very competitive so I'm really proud of her she's been our most consistent player all year now be honest yeah uh, is that a tough recruiting pitch because <laughs> the mom knows you very very well I, yeah. I go in there a little apprehensive <laughs> she may know a little bit too much about me True story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that made me feel good that she wanted yeah, to trust her think. daughter with me. So that yeah. was fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's take a quick time out. Uh, we're going to come back and talk more specifically about this LSU women's golf team. That, that is a tough recruiting. I mean, <laughs> be careful, right? Right? Be careful. Absolutely. You may, may know a whole lot more yeah. than you anticipate. <laughs> yeah. we'll take a break. Continue our conversation <laughs> with Karen Bonson here on Tiger Track. Stay with us. Tiger Tracks on CST is being brought to you by. Capital One Bank, the official bank of all things Louisiana. And by Louisiana Propane Dealers. Get up to $1,200 in rebates on propane accessories. Find out how at louisianapropane.com. Welcome back to LSU Tiger Tracks. This is Bill Frankes along with Jordy Holtberg as we continue our conversation with LSU women's golf coach Karen Bonson. Karen and the Tigers playing host to the LSU Tiger Golf Classic beginning on Sunday at the University Club here in Baton Rouge. And, and Karen, the University Club, as we know, has developed into one of the top golf courses in the country, especially for collegiate golf. Mm -hmm. You guys are hosting the NCAA Regional later this year. We are. Beginning on Sunday, it's the LSU Tiger Golf Classic, where we can expect some of the best teams in the nation. Tell us about the tournament and, and how you guys uh, uh, plan to put on a fantastic event. Yeah, we're really looking forward to having it. We've got 17 fantastic teams coming in for the field. Phew. And a lot of the teams are coming, they wanted to see the golf course. Because we are hosting regional, right. they might be sent here. Mm -hmm. And it is a very difficult golf course, and it's one that helps to have played it a few times. So, of course, we had a long list of people wanting to play in our event, so we were a little picky with who we picked. But we have a fantastic field. A few of the regulars that we always do, you know, but we added, like, Duke this year and some other ones. So it's uh, some great, you know, talented teams. We haven't had the coldest of winters. We haven't. So how does that set up yeah. with the course? I mean, the golf course is really good. It's still coming out of being dormant, you know, mm -hmm. still been winter. Um, but uh, it's in great shape considering the weather we've had. Right. Um, I think they've done a really fantastic job. And we also just redid the bunkers, so that really makes it even better, getting ready. Crazy question. Why, why a Sunday start? Um, it was kind of interesting this year. Um, our normal dates would have been over Easter. I wasn't going to have all of our volunteers have to work Easter. Okay. And then I also wanted it to still be in LSU spring break. So I made it a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, which is the beginning of LSU spring break. Okay. Keep yep. the girls from the beach. Yeah, well, <laughs> something keep like them on that. The course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From a spectator standpoint, yeah. Karen, what, what can fans expect when they go out to watch yeah. this type of event? I mean, they can come out and watch, like I said, some of the best players out there in um, women's collegiate golf. And these young ladies are going to one day be out on the um, LPGA Tour, you know. Um, the number one player from last year is going to be in the field, um, who just met, uh, beat out Madeline Sachter, my team, right. her player of the year. Okay. She plays for Duke um, and um, some other great players. So they get to come out there and watch team competition, you know, as well as the individual title going on. Do you play as a team, T to T, and, or how does that work? No, with collegiate golf, um, what we do is like my number five player will play with the number five player from two other schools. Okay. So it goes the five players play okay. first, then four, three, two, wow. one, you know, and that. So it's threesomes. Okay. And then we play three rounds, and you count the low four scores each day. Okay. You know. So. And as you said earlier, your young team has had its share of adversity, yeah. but it seems to have turned the corner. How can so. this event playing at home maybe continue to, to springboard you toward uh, you know, even stronger finish? I really, truly believe that this team just gets one good round under their belt. I think this is just gonna just, they're just going to take off, and it's just about confidence. 
and what better place to do it than at home and have them support of people coming out that's big for them so we really want people to come out and support them and also just in general they know the golf course uh -huh. you know sometimes I can put pressure on you but also um, it's, it's a good thing especially this golf course is one if you know what's going on, it yeah. helps a lot. Helps to read those greens. Yes. Alexis Rather is your assistant. What, is. what are you doing now between now and <laughs> Sunday? What, how do you, what do you do as a coach? Uh, we've been uh, doing a lot. We went out all day yesterday and set all the whole locations and where they're going to hit from. And on these greens, like you said, there's a lot going on on those greens out there. So being very precise with where you put the pin is important. Mm -hmm. So we set that so that someone doesn't come in and put it in a crazy place. Okay. So I control all that kind of stuff. So we've been doing all that, you know, doing the pairings and getting the sponsors all lined up and everything. So all part. that fun part. <laughs> the yeah. fun part. Yeah. Do, do you uh, make it especially tough on Tuesday, the final round, with those pin placements? We try to be fair, but we have some good uh, last day <laughs> final round uh, t pins that I know I know about. Okay, yeah. As well you should. Yes. Very good. Well, Karen, uh, quickly, just about a minute left, but uh, you have established uh, such a great program. There's so many young ladies on the Pro Tour right now. Tell there us are. about yeah. them. Yeah, I'm really fortunate to have a lot of young ladies playing out there. We have Austin Ernst on the LPGA Tour right now, as well as the, quite a few on the Symmetra Tour, which is the LPGA Developmental Tour. Right. And these are some young, young ladies that just missed out on getting their LPGA uh, card. And in fact, some of them do have some status on the LPGA. Madeline Saxstrom, who played for me number one, you know, last yeah. year, um, she made the final stage, has full status on Symmetra Tour, um, and she went on her first pro tournament, shot 64 the first round set a course record Holy and cow, went wow. on to finish third in the event, but what a great way to start, yeah, you know, and along with Lindsey Gain, um, Megan McChrystal, Katie Harris, um, gosh, who else? Tessa Teachman. Tessa Teachman, yeah. of course, who yeah. was on big break with Katie. That's yeah, right. So right, that right. was really great, and I'm really pulling for all these young ladies to do well. Have a great tournament. All starts thank Sunday you. through yep. Tuesday at the University Club. Yep. Karen Bonson, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. We'll take Appreciate a time out. We'll come back with more SEC gymnastics meet preview next here on Tiger Tracks. Welcome back to Tiger Tracks. We shift from golf to gymnastics, where Dee Dee Bro's number two seeded LSU gymnastics team is in Little Rock for the SEC championships. Yeah, LSU is the number two seed. Mm -hmm. The number one seed is Florida. Beat them. And of course, LSU went to Gainesville just a few weeks ago. Let's not talk about the scoring and all that. Right, right, okay, all right. But it, LSU's had a remarkable year. Defeated Oklahoma yep. early in the year, defeated Florida. Yep. Huge win over Alabama yep. at home to conclude yep. the regular season. So this SEC meet uh, should be a fantastic event. Garrett Walbert had a chance to talk to Coach Bro and the Tigers. Let's take a look. It would mean so much because that, that's one of our goals. That's what this team has aspired to do. Um, we've set our sights on, on this meet. Last weekend was planned around our focusing and our preparation for the SEC championships. Um, I, hoisting that trophy up and bringing that trophy back home to LSU would be an incredible feeling. The coaches wanted us to treat this meet kind of as like a mock meet for SECs. We start on the same rotation, we start in bars, and like we will start this weekend, and um, just kind of like a practice for what we're going to do this weekend, and so I think it went really well. We were really excited when we found out we had that rotation um, this past meet and then come in the coming SEC meet because it's a confidence builder. Uh, we've been training that way in the gym. Um, we'll train and we'll start on bars um, as a group and it has prepared us mentally and um, we went in there and we had the mindset of just really being able to propel ourselves into the postseason and uh, keeping up with the consistency that we've already started. And so just being able to go out there and um, compete in that environment and bring it it was really great, and we're really excited to get into the postseason. I mean, obviously, it, it's something that you know you want as a team, and you're working hard, and you want to make a goal. And our goal is definitely to win SECs. But um, we're not really thinking about you know we have to win, we have to win, because you know you just get ahead of yourself, and you know things kind of fall apart if you tend when you do that. So we're just you know like I said, going at it like we have the past few meets because they have been so successful. And it is motivation, you know. You're like it'd be really cool to be able to win SECs for the first time, and however many years, 35, so it, that's, I mean, none of us were even like alive or thought about it at that time, so it'd be awesome, you know. We're excited. Um, I think our body of work, I think the, the gradual progression and the maturity that this team has shown throughout the season um, really 
will kind of, I think, open the door to a new wave of confidence that um, we're, we're really ready. This, this team is, um, I think they're very mature. There's no I in this team. It's all about uh, doing it together. And you know, if you're going to win big meets, you have to win it with consistency. And this team does more difficulty than anybody in the country. What, what we need to do is realize how good we are and just have confidence in that fact. We've talked about this, like, you know, preseason and going into season and stuff. But, like, I think all of us freshmen know what role we need to play. And we know that we can do it as well. And so, you know, postseason is going to be new for me, but um, I'm really excited. We're in the second seed, and so we're with, um, you know, the top four teams right now. Um, so I think that'll be really good. I mean, we've seen, we've competed through with these teams in regular season, and so we know their gymnastics, and they know our gymnastics and stuff, but right now it's just going out there and doing what we know how to do. I think that they have an idea of what we're walking into here, but I think that they have a lot of confidence built up. I think that we've worked really hard to instill their confidence and um, grow as a team, and I think that they've done such a great job of that, and they've done a great job of just embracing our culture, and I think that they're ready to go into this kind of environment. We feel pretty good about it because it was such a strong finish, and it wasn't like that was the only meet that we did that well at. You know, For the past few weeks, we've been very consistent in um, you know, the scoring, obviously, but also just the way we're going about the meet, and I think that's definitely very good for our confidence. In the heart of our floor lineup, we have McKenna Kelly and Jessica Savona, two very different dancers, um, both extremely powerful, but in a different way. They bring two very different dy dynamics to the floor lineup. Um, McKenna, she worked tirelessly to get my approval and to be at a point where she was relaxed and she looked like she was having fun, and she has power that is tremendous. Um, Jessica actually went first last year every meet which may or may not have hurt her score, but she never said anything. She never had any complaints, and she has the probably most difficult floor routine in the country. She opens with a pass that not very many people do, and she, her second pass is a pass that most people open with, um, and she does it effortlessly. And so I think she's definitely rewarded for that. So I'm excited to see her come into her own and really sell the last four or five meets that we have. When they go on the road, they want to enjoy that same kind of enthusiasm, that same kind of give and take with the crowd. Um, it plays a major role. It plays a huge role. If it, if it didn't, we wouldn't be putting so much time and effort into what our brand looks like and how much we market and promote our program. But this is such a great product. This is such a great team. Thank you, Garrett. I, again, I don't know how they determine seating, but it is what it is. And let's get back on those four uh, routines and let's see if we can get a championship. Absolutely. The postseason gymnastics is one of the, is the most exciting yeah. time of the year in that sport with the SEC meet this weekend, NCAA regional coming up in a, in a few weeks, and then, of course, the final meet, which will take place in Fort Worth, Texas. So LSU looking to make another run toward the Super Six and perhaps let's go. that come first on. national title. Wouldn't that be sweet? Yeah, we'll yeah. take a break. We'll come back with more. This is Tiger Tracks on CST. Tiger Tracks on CST is being brought to you by Capital One Bank, the official bank of all things Louisiana, and by Louisiana Propane Dealers. Get up to $1,200 in rebates on propane accessories. Find out how at louisianapropane.com. Welcome back to Tiger Tracks. Time for our university feature. I'm very intrigued by this uh, research on geriatrics and aging. We're living longer. Yep. Let's live it better, right? LSU has uh, many programs in place, mm -hmm. Jordy, to, to help elderly people uh, live productive lives and, and stay young. Right. Uh, one re way they do that is incorporating different types of physical activity, even uh, a martial art no like way. Tai Chi. Oh, yeah. So uh, Tai Chi has been a prominent uh, component <laughs> of helping elderly people stay active. Let's watch. The Modified Tai Chi program is a program designed to help older adults with and without peripheral neuropathy and Parkinson's disease. We have people that don't know what caused their disorder, and so they're in pain or they're numb, and it's causing these problems, and they don't know what to do. So anything to help them is what they're looking for. The Life Course and Aging Center on LSU's campus is committed to working with healthy aging. 
Some of these diseases are degenerative, and so that's why we modify the Tai Chi. We've helped people with strength gains, we've helped them with balance, we've also helped them with mobility and endurance. My name is Frankie Shakespeare, and I've been coming to this class for three years. It helps my you know, walk and tremor. I, I tell everybody I see what a nice place it is and how good the people are. Things that these people should be doing because they're having trouble with those items. So we might do a little bit of walking forward and backward. Changing direction is hard for people with Parkinson's to do. And so we'll incorporate that as part of the warm up or warm down or within the exercise. Since the baby boomers, we're living longer. And so what comes with that is a lot of the ailments and the problems, et cetera. So as we work with these older adults that we want to stay in our families, we want our grandparents around longer, we want our parents around longer, and we want them to be functional. We don't want them to be in homes or putting burdens on people. We want them to be moving around. They are so smart. They have so many things to still contribute and teach us. It gets them motivated to do other things more often, feeling more comfortable walking around, playing with their grandkids, which they all want to do. One woman actually started being able to use her china again. She was so imbalanced, she wouldn't use her good dishes. When she started getting more balance for participating in the Tai Chi program, she could pull out her china again and have people over. It keeps me moving. If you stop moving, you can't get back. So there you have it, the latest on geriatrics and aging. We all want to live longer. We all want to live prosperously and healthy. That's the key. Exactly. Active body. Tai Chi, active. baby. Exactly. Keep the body active, keep the mind active, and that's the key. I see Regis Philbin. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hawking <laughs> Tai Chi. Yeah. Not bad. All right. Um, coming up, big baseball series. You know, I, I talked with some, some former players, and there's the season opener, which is uh, so much excitement, and then there's the SEC opener. Right. And they exactly. all said it's very, very similar. It really is. It's like a whole new season. Yeah. yeah. Because uh, the LSU versus uh, Alabama. Alabama has the uh, top uh, pitching ERA in the SEC oh, entering good the weekend. So uh, LSU's hitters will be challenged. And, of course, uh, hopefully the Tiger pitching rotation of uh, Poche, Lang, and Valak can be effective as well against Alabama's hitters. If also, I told you, yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. The 1986 team, yes. LSU's first College World Series team, is having its 30-year reunion this weekend. So a lot of those guys will be at the box Who as well. Who was the star of that team? Who? Well, you know, Albert Bell, of course. Oh, yeah. Uh, Rob Leary, he Jeff Gerton, Jeff Rebelay. He could hit a little lot, bit. There were six major leaguers on that team. I saw Al Bell hit one over the student apartments yeah. the old box oh, yeah. forever and a day. <laughs> wow. For Bill, I'm Jordy. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time on Tiger Tracks. Thank <laughs> you.